Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 4 for June the 26th, 2022. We're still in Unit 1 entitled God Delivers and Restores. And our topic today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Back to Basics. Our devotion reading is taken from Psalm 34 uh, verses 1 through 7. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 51 and we'll be studying today from the book of Isaiah chapter 51 verses 1 through 8. Our key verse reads, Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. That's taken from Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to examine Isaiah's example of God's rich faithfulness in Israel's spiritual history. Secondly, to feel encouraged through personal trust in God even when others speak disparagingly about our faith. And then thirdly, to share the goodness and deliverance of God with others. We have just two outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled Look Back and the second outline is entitled Universal Salvation. I certainly thank and praise God that I'm able to share his word with you again. I thank and praise God that we're able to continue to um, feast upon the Word of God that we might be encouraged even in the midst of adversity. And so we always encourage you to uh, get your Bible and uh, we're going to share some things with you today and prepare yourself to take some notes. We have quite a bit of ground to cover with you. But I want to begin with uh, some of the biblical context uh, one uh, particular part from our lesson standards so we can have some context um, uh, for what the prophet Isaiah uh, is pushing here. Uh, but from our lesson standard, in many ways Judah's punishment was an indictment uh, of her false gods and of the sins those gods condone. Uh, the people had turned from the true God in spite of the great acts of deliverance they had experienced as a nation and the abominations in the Ten Commandments <clears throat> to have no other gods or graven images as in Exodus chapter 20 uh, verse is 3 through 6 and the exile did have a purifying effect so following the uh, Babylonian captivity, uh, Jewish idolatry was never a serious problem again. Uh, however, um, there was of course uh, other issues that, uh, that did arise within the community. Uh, and then from our lesson quarterly, I want to read a little bit of this context, but after explaining justifiable reasons for their condemnation and punishment, God brought a message of comfort and redemption. Uh, the theme of chapters uh, 40 through 66 of the book of Isaiah. So within this section are dialogues between God and the people. The exiles responded to God's announcements of comfort and future deliverance through the servant Messiah, uh, Messiah's ministry uh, with despondent complaints and accusations of divine abandonment. Uh, but God addressed their complaints through a series of four exhortations. I want us to really focus in on these exhortations that were designed to encourage them, number one, to trust and to listen, uh, to review their history to heed God's instructions and fearlessly face the future. That's in Isaiah uh, from chapter 50 verse 10 through Isaiah chapter 51 verse 8 which is a part of our text today. So uh, three of these 
uh, exhortations are the focus of this week's lesson. So God wanted these individuals, uh, uh, his people, even though they were being punished uh, uh, for their sins, they had been exiled uh, in Babylon for their, uh, uh, for their part or their role, if you will, in disobeying God. But God still had a message of comfort for his people. I think that's worthy of of, of, of us uh, really reflecting upon as people of God. And we're going to talk a little bit as we get into this lesson about the package that you have uh, in terms of your salvation. And so even when we are disobedient toward God uh, as his people, he has promised that he would never leave us and that he would never forsake us. And this is the message that is coming this message of comfort uh, 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 targeted at this brokenness uh, uh, in this community at the time uh, God was trying to encourage them to look ahead this condition this adversity was not a permanent situation it was a temporary uh, uh, situation it was a temporary exile to teach them some valuable lessons about their relationship with God and uh, the fact that they needed to be faithful uh, to the covenant as God was faithful to the covenant as well. But I want to repeat this again because we do have a tendency of complaining about our circumstances, even as people of God. And even though God has blessed us tremendously, we all are guilty of this at some point in time we're still complaining that things are not good enough they are good they are well with us but they we want better and we want more and so we we tend to complain even in prayer about the things that God uh, uh, perhaps may not be doing uh, but God is saying here he addressed their complaints through a series of exhortations. Number one, again, God wanted them to trust him, right? God wants us to trust him in the midst of this situation. Uh, uh, God wanted them, God wants us to listen to him, right? We still have to listen to the voice of God. We still have to listen to the word of God that we might be encouraged. And then God wanted them to to review their history. Uh, uh, what is your personal history with God? All of us have a script, if you will. All of us have, uh, uh, we have an uh, individual template of, of God's dealings in our lives, and we have a corporate uh, a template. Uh, so we can look at this as individuals, and we can look at this as, as, as uh, uh, the body of Christ, how our past and where God has brought us from and what God has established in our lives. We have to look at this, right? God wants us to look at the past, if you will, so, so we can gain some encouragement about how faithful God has been in our lives. Do not throw your past away in terms of what God has done for you. You need that, and God wanted these individuals who... Uh, uh, were in captivity to look at their past, right? Uh, uh, and then God wanted them to heed his instructions, right? All of these things uh, God was presenting in a practical way uh, through his word, through the prophet Isaiah, uh, things that, that, that uh, uh, his people could readily uh, 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 put their hands on, if you will, and use it in their current situation. And then God wanted them to fearlessly face the future. That's huge, right? So the, the, the forecast, if you will, about the situation even in our present day, uh, sometimes it's not good. Uh, 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 the legislators, the politicians, uh, uh, we they paint the news media and all of these different outlets. They paint a bleak picture uh, uh, about the things that may be coming up on the land. 
and and that may be true but as the people of God right the Word of God and the promises of God they apply to us and sometimes when we are hearing all of these different things that are going out from these different uh, outlets if you will there is no mention of the promises of God and so we become overwhelmed with the news that has no biblical content for the believer and so so we need to be able to combat those things that we hear I'm trying to help somebody today uh, uh, we need to combat those negative things these those negative outlooks with the promises of God and the things that God have done in our lives that's very important so having established these things we want to move quickly to uh, uh, our first outline so I, I just want to make the uh, uh, the point here uh, where we are we are in volume 7 if you will of the book of Isaiah that deal with the comfort of God's people and as I read to you those are chapters 40 through 66 all of those uh, 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 particular chapters form volume 7 right and it deals particularly with the comfort of God's people so I want to begin as we uh, uh, start in our first outline entitled look back this is taken from Isaiah uh, chapter 51 verses 1 through 3 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says listen to me you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who gave you birth when I called him he was only one man and I blessed him and made him many verse 3 the Lord will surely comfort and will look with compassion on all her ruins he will make her deserts like Eden her wastelands like the garden of the Lord joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the sound of singing right this is huge right God is saying to his people to Judah particularly if you are pursuing those of you that are pursuing righteousness what does that mean those of you that are in right standing uh, I want to give you uh, uh, Romans chapter 5 because righteousness is a word that we use quite a bit and we need to define that and what it means to to be righteous right that we might be able to practice or, or, or to pursue righteousness and I think I want to read this in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 you all have seen this time and time again but the Bible says that I'm beginning at verse 1 uh, Romans chapter 5 therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God verse 3 and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope now hope verse 5 says now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us so this righteousness that God is telling his people to pursue is based on what they believe and then how they act according to what they have heard I hope that makes sense for you today so if we fast forward to our day and our time we are righteous we are put in right standing with God because we have been justified by what we believe we have heard the good news of Jesus Christ and we have believed it and so we are uh, we have been justified right 
We have been put in right standing with God uh, through Jesus Christ. And so what that means is that we are pursuing righteousness, right? We are pursuing what has established uh, 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 in our lives. And this is what God is saying to his people. He says, you who pursue righteousness and seek the Lord, you got to look to the rock. Isn't that huge? You got to look to how you came about as a people. You got to look to uh, uh, Abraham and to Sarah and how the Lord used these two individuals to make a nation, right? So we have to look, if we look at our lives today and, and the adversity and the trials and uh, the things that we are going through that are causing us physical and spiritual discomfort. I'm trying to help somebody to understand that your salvation is a position that you are in and what God is telling his people then and what God is telling us now is that you have to use the position that you're in, right? As an established individual or believer with God, that position has benefits. And as I read to you uh, from Romans chapter 5, uh, 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 talking about uh, uh, we know that we also glory in tribulations. How do we do that? Because of the position that we're in. We're able to still have joy in the midst of tribulations. Uh, uh, we're still able to persevere because of the Spirit of God that is moving up on us because of the position that we're in. Right, and so that's very important. And then that perseverance is producing character. That's huge, right? And then as and as we uh, uh, see character produced in our lives, then that moves and shifts to hope. So we begin to hope in God because we see how these uh, uh, transitional things are happening in our lives because of the position we're in. And so God is telling his people here that are going through this adversity uh, that they need to look at who they are. They need to look at how they were established. And the Lord says here in verse 3 of our text from Isaiah 51, and this is God's faithfulness at work. He said, the Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. When I was studying this, I was thinking about uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, 1. And, and I would just encourage you to, to read the entire book of 2 Corinthians because there are different aspects of glory as it relates to Christian ministry. And we need to be able to dissect uh, all of these different aspects we have a complex position that God has put us in in terms of being saved. And the, uh, the book of 2 Corinthians uh, 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 uniquely isolates all of these different aspects of, of how we are and who we are and what we are and how these things are affected in, uh, uh, in ministry. And, and you really need to, to, to look at that. It is priceless for the believer to understand the position that you are in. You are an heir and a joint heir uh, to the kingdom of God. You have promises attached to your life because God has established you as a believer and you have to use that, right? You are entitled to it because of the position that you are in. So we need to exercise these things in a way that encourages, encourages us, even if God is allowing you to go through a difficult period in your life. This is huge, right? This is personal, right? And so we need to make it personal. And so this is what uh, Isaiah's words of comfort, as I said in chapters 40 uh, through 66, were meant to encourage the uh, exiled Jewish remnant uh, in Babylon more than 50, 150 years before they needed them. Isn't that huge? Before they needed them. 
So they had endured approximately 40 years of exile in Babylon without any sign of relief. Despite God's message of comfort and promise of deliverance and restoration, watch this, the people could not visualize it because of self-absorption with their adverse circumstances, right? That happens to us. We become so absorbed with what we're going through, we miss the fact that God has made promises, right? We miss the fact that God has said, I'm not going to leave you. But a trial is a very unique thing to happen in our lives. And some of our trials are physical and uh, some are spiritual, some are both. But sometimes the battle gets hot and we cannot visualize, right? We cannot visualize. So we need to be around a remedy, a good remedy for that would be what I shared uh, with you earlier from our biblical context and how God established uh, uh, his response uh, to his people. They needed to trust him. They needed to listen to him. They needed to review their history. They needed to heed God's instruction. And then they needed to fearlessly face the future, right? So when we're going through things, uh, we need to examine these these uh, 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 exhortations to see if there's anything that we need to be looking at uh, 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 in addition to looking at our circumstances. What did God say, right? What does God say about what we're going through? What does God say about the condition that we're in? And, 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 and I would just add this, stay around the saints of God, right? Flank yourself with, with like-minded believers, uh, people that uh, 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 can encourage you. Get yourself a prayer partner, right? Get someone that, 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 that can encourage you, uh, uh, not just a person that can gossip about uh, a particular matter, but that can go in prayer with you. Right, that can share scripture with you to help edify you while you're going through your circumstance. And so, this is huge here that God was uh, 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 encouraging his people uh, uh, and essentially telling them, You have resources, right? I know you don't think you do because of the trial that you're going through. But what I'm telling you, if you do the things that I'm sharing with you, you will encourage yourself because I'm not going to leave you and I'm not going to forsake you. And I like what God is saying here in verse 3. I want to read it again and then we'll move on. The Lord uh, will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins and he will make her deserts like Eden, her wasteland like the garden of, of the Lord. Watch this. And then joy and gladness will be found in her. In other words, you should have a praise in the midst of the trial. Right? Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving. Right? This is the maturity of, 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 of our Christianity. Thanksgiving and the sound of singing. We are still able to thank God in the midst of a difficult time. We are still in the heat of the battle, but we're still able to say, Lord, I thank you for who I am in you. We're still able to say, Lord, I praise you, even though you haven't brought about a, a, a deliverance yet. And I'm in this thing, and I've been in this thing a long time, but I thank you for being saved. We have to overstep the trial, if you will, and thank God for what he said he will do, even though you may not see it, right? We need to hope in a way that we can see that there is no way the Lord can leave me because he said he wouldn't. And if he has been faithful in the past, why would he not be faithful uh, uh, in determining our future? We need to recount those things and you need to go into your history book and where and look where the Lord have brought you from. That should encourage you on where you need to be and where you would like to go. 
So we wanted to labor there with you uh, uh, because there had been a prescription. I should tell you this very quickly. Uh, there had been a prescription uh, 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 of this Babylonian captivity of how long it would last. So prayer was not going to change that arrangement because God had already said it would be 70 years of captivity, not 69, it's going to be 70. So prayer is not going to change that situation because God had already uh, 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 announced that that was the time frame. And so what I'm sharing with you today, we don't know when God is going to stop the trial, stop the adversity, but there is a prescription that God will allow things to run their course until it produces the effect, if you will, uh, uh, that he desires and then we'll move on out of that situation into test number two. As we read earlier, uh, uh, Judah did heal of some things, but there were some other issues. In other words, life continued and they had other issues that God would have to deliver them from. So I hope that makes sense for us today. And I hope that this encourages you today to help you to understand that you do have a history with the Lord and you do need to take a look and see where the Lord have brought you from. Our second outline is uh, uh, says talking about uh, universal salvation. And we're going to pull apart a little bit more about who you are and what it means when you are telling people that you are saved. We want you to understand what you're saying. And we want you to be fully armed with what that means because there are promises attached to that. That's just not a position that you just have and, and in the abstract and there's nothing, there's no substance to it. Uh, uh, this is dynamic in what God has done in your life that you can even say that you're saved and we need to pull this apart so we can be encouraged about who we are that position is huge for any believer any person that is saved and any person that needs to be saved it is a blessing uh, uh, beyond a blessing but Isaiah 51 verses 4 through 8 again from the NIV translation God is saying here through Isaiah listen to me my people hear me my nation instruction will go out from me my justice will become a light to the nations verse 5 my righteousness draws near speedily my salvation is on the way and my arm will bring justice to the nations the islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm verse 6 lift up your eyes to the heavens look at the earth beneath the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Verse 7. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have taken my instruction to heart. Do not fear the reproach of mere mortals or be terrified by their insults. Verse 8, For the moth will eat them up like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation through all generations. This is huge, right? God is saying, you got to look up. You got to look to the heavens, right? I'm giving you instructions that light is going to come from me. Instructions are going to come from me. Justice will become a, 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 a light to the nations. He says, "My righteousness." And what Jesus, uh, what what God is talking about here uh, uh, in terms of, of of this righteousness and salvation is looking forward to the future of the Messiah, of Christ the Savior, who was coming into the world. God knew what the remedy was for sin. God knew what the antidote was for this unrighteous character and nature that his people had fallen sway to even from other nations. That was an internal struggle that they needed to be delivered from. And the law could not do that. But the law, the Mosaic law, was leading the people to Jesus Christ, right? To the cross, to Calvary, and the work, even the finished work, that God would do to thoroughly condemn sin, to thoroughly
punish sin through and upon his only begotten son on behalf of his people and doing away with it uh, through the cross and through the blood of Jesus Christ. So the people that draw near to, to, to Jesus Christ uh, could be justified by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. As I read to you earlier from Romans chapter 5, verse 1. I want to read that one verse again so we can be clear. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Watch this through, right? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's very important. We have to come through the work uh, 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 of Jesus Christ at Calvary if we want to have peace with God, right? He is the atonement for the sinfulness of mankind. So if we're not going to come through Jesus Christ, we're certainly not going to be righteous because we cannot establish it on our own. So so we need to be justified by what we are believing. In other words, believing the message that God has gave concerning his son. And so this is the, the forecast here that God is establishing uh, uh, in this Old Testament prophecy uh, through Isaiah, that salvation, this is, this is clearly looking at the work of Jesus Christ and his cross. And so he says, my salvation is on the way. This is going to be the future uh, uh, for his people uh, uh, to look forward to. And this is the hope that we should have. And, and so we thank God that we are living in a time where this particular prophecy has been fulfilled in our very lives. Right. So as when we think about being saved, what what does that mean? What are we saying when we tell people that we are saved? What we're saying to people is that we have been delivered right from the penalty and power of sin. And we know that because Christ took on that event for us. So we have been delivered from that, not of our own. But through him, as I read to you from Romans chapter 5, verse 1. But when I was looking into this, uh, I ran into the word how we were snatched. We were, Christ literally snatched us from serious per, uh, peril when he saved us. We were on our way to literal destruction when God, through Jesus Christ, snatched us from that peril. Right. So we need to thank God and what God did when he saved us, he translated uh, 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 us into a position in the body of Christ with full benefits, with full benefits. So we need to appreciate this today. And so I want to read a couple of more things and then I want to finish with you in Romans chapter eight, uh, just to uh, uh, fortify the position uh, that we're in that it really it doesn't matter uh, and I'm not minimizing what we may be going through but what I'm sharing with you it will not change the position because you have a trial in your life it won't change what God has done in your life that's what I want to get across to you today but I want us to understand from God's perspective that salvation was already at work but its fruition would come centuries ahead for Israel and humanity. So God's salvation will last forever. I want you to look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, and Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. So uh, verses 7 and 8 that we read to you are a final call to the remnant to remain faithful and refuse to become intimidated by their enemy's re uh, reproach. So they were assured that all who revile God's people would perish, but his salvation endures forever. And we want to remember that today, and we want to be encouraged by this lesson today, that believers can confidently endure rejection, ridicule and adversity by looking back to his redemptive work on Calvary. So I want to finish with you uh, in Romans chapter 8 
uh, just a couple of verses here uh, verse 37 uh, 38 and 39 and then we'll have prayer with you and then we'll, we, we will be finished so Romans chapter 8 verse 37 you all have seen this many times the Bible says yet in all these things right we are more than conquerors through him who loved us verse 38 for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come verse 39 nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord so we hope that encourages you today it doesn't matter what it is all of these conditions right Paul says in all these things right all of them we are more than conquerors right because of him who loved us right it may not feel like that right your trial may be so hot you don't see how this is possible but what I'm sharing with you today there is nothing let me share, share this with you again nor height this is verse 39 nor depth depth nor any other created thing shall be able right it will not separate us from the love of God it doesn't matter how long it's been going on you still belong to God you that trial did not separate you from his love whatever it is right so we need to be encouraged and this is the importance of knowing the word of God and being able to use it and we have to speak to the trial right we have to speak these things over our very lives right we have to speak these things in the midst of what we're going through, right? Don't let that situation run the course as though you are not somebody to God uh, uh, through Christ Jesus. You are, and the Bible has declared that you are, right? So we need to be armed with the promises of God so we can be able to speak his promises in the trial, right? in the midst of the adversity we know we know we are persuaded I like the way Paul laid this out here he said in verse 38 for I am persuaded in other words he's convicted he is thoroughly convicted I believe he says something again like that in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 we have to be persuaded by the word of God that we are not forsaken we are not left out we God has not forgotten he still knows who you are he knows where you are he knows what we are going through and he has not forgotten even though even though it may appear that he is delayed or his promises are delayed they are sure to happen in your life because as Isaiah 51 and 3 says I want to read this as we close the Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins right he will make her deserts like Eden her wastelands like the garden of the Lord joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the sound of singing I would just say this to you get your praise on let's pray God we thank you for this hour for this this prayer we thank you for this word for this lesson we thank you for what you have encouraged uh, uh, us to do we thank you for the the past that we have uh, and how faithful you have been to us we thank you for what you've already done we expect you to deliver like you said you would we expect you to continue to shower us with comfort 
in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, just lift my brothers and sisters in prayer, all of the families. We know the struggles are mounting upon our very lives. But we are thankful today that we have a position in Jesus Christ. We have a promise and promises attached to our lives. And we, God, pray that you would help us and encourage our hearts to embrace your word and the promises thereof that we might be encouraged even as we see the day drawing nigh. We thank you for placing us in this position that we could draw from it just as we do from our bank accounts. God, we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke any adversary that comes against your people today and the purposes by which you have established our lives. We thank you, God, for who we are and for what we are. Thank you for Jesus for giving his life and shedding his blood for our sins. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost who is active in our very lives and leading us into the will of God. Father, we pray that even as we go down in prayer for one another, that you would lead us in worshipful prayer in the name of Jesus, that you might continue to get the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. God bless you, church. Just know that I love you and that we are praying that you would be encouraged by the word of God. Get your Bible and encourage yourself. There are so many promises attached to your life and you need to know what they are. So again, until such time that the Lord would permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.